Hi, I'm Chris Sangster, and welcome back to the studio. Today, we're gonna level up your workflow in Logic Pro by helping you to memorize the five keyboard shortcuts that I use most often. And stay tuned to the end of the video because we're gonna do a pop quiz to see just how well you remember these shortcuts. Learning to use a DAW like Logic Pro can be a daunting and at times frustrating process. And people often ask me how I know so much about Logic Pro. And the answer is that I've amassed this knowledge over many years. I did not learn it all at once. I started using Logic Pro in 2007. So I have about 16 years of practice under my belt. And in fact, I still routinely learn new things about Logic Pro all the time, and I'm always striving to improve my workflow. With a software this robust, it's always possible to learn more. And in my opinion, the best way to learn something that's this vast is to break it down into small, manageable chunks. That's why we're gonna start by memorizing just five simple keyboard shortcuts. No need to look through a whole list of keyboard shortcuts, trying to memorize everything. Just learn these five first and it will greatly speed up your workflow. And hey, if you already know all five of these keyboard shortcuts, drop a comment below and let us know what five keyboard shortcuts that you use most frequently. Number one, X. All right, let's jump in with the most basic one and my most used shortcut. And that is hitting the X key on your keyboard to open up the mixer. Even though I have a second monitor here and when mixing, I will typically pull the mixer window up in a separate window on that second monitor, but I still find myself using this shortcut all the time, especially when recording or producing, because in those scenarios, I'll typically have my UAD console up on my second monitor. And I find it so easy to just quickly jump into the mixer by hitting the X key, doing what I need to in there, hitting the X key again to hide it, and then getting on with my work inside the workspace. Number two, control M. Hitting control M on your keyboard mutes a selected region or MIDI note. This one is super helpful when producing and you're trying out different ideas. You can quickly mute regions, individual MIDI notes, or whole sections of regions or MIDI notes super quickly. It allows you to audition different arrangement combinations quickly and to have the flexibility to add parts back in later because they're just muted, not deleted. It also saves you from having to mute entire tracks or use automation to silence a track at a certain point in your song. Number three, Command R. So while we're on the topic of most used keyboard shortcuts for producing, we have to mention Command R to repeat a region. Select a region in your timeline and hit Command R on your keyboard to create a copy of that region directly after it in the timeline. But as I've talked about before, this keyboard shortcut is best used in conjunction with the marquee tool, as adding a marquee selection first allows you to precisely define where the repeat should start. This allows you to copy shorter regions to a specific beat further along in the timeline instead of having the repeat start right at the end of the selected region. This is especially helpful for drum samples. Number four, Command D. Again, when I'm producing a recording, I'm using this shortcut all the time. Select a track and hit Command D on your keyboard to create a duplicate of that track one that includes the same channel strip settings and routing, but not the regions in the track. This allows you to quickly layer sounds and create doubles for things like claps or background vocals. Or make a quick effect for a section of a song. For example, if I want a lo-fi effect on the drum loop for this section here, I find it much quicker to just duplicate the track, copy the MIDI over, and add the lo-fi plugin to the new track, as opposed to automating the lo-fi plugin on the original track, which is a bit clunky to me. Number five, Command Shift D. With a group of tracks selected, hitting Command Shift D on your keyboard allows you to create a track stack. This is one of my most used keyboard shortcuts when I am mixing. And it used to be such a hassle to bust groups of tracks together in Logic Pro, but now it's so easy. 
Just select the tracks you want to group together and hit Command Shift D. You then get the option to create either a folder stack or a summing stack. And I recommend always use a summing stack because this is the one that allows you to put plugins on the summing bus that is created. With folder stacks, you can only control the volume, solo, and mute of the entire stack, and I find they are most useful for organizational purposes only. But for mixing tasks, the summing stack is where it's at. It allows you to quickly bust groups of tracks together and affect them all simultaneously by adding plugins or automation to the summing bus. All right, pop quiz time. Let's see how much you remember. And if you're feeling extra committed today, pause the video and open up a project of yours in Logic Pro and perform each of the keyboard shortcuts as I ask the questions. Here we go. What keyboard shortcut repeats a region? What tool helps repeat a region to a later defined point in the timeline? What keyboard shortcut opens the mixer? What keyboard shortcut mutes a selected region or MIDI note? What keyboard shortcut creates a track stack? What keyboard shortcut duplicates a track? All right, how did you do? Comment below on how many you remembered. Also, let me know if you found this video format helpful for learning these keyboard shortcuts. If so, I would be happy to make more like this. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you at the studio next time. Thanks.